Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this, say the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. Today is Palm Sunday, the day we shout aloud, Hosanna in the highest, when we cry out to God, save me, because that's what Hosanna means. Save us, your people. We need you. They wanted a king, and they got one, just not what they were expecting. I love the story of the parade before it even happens. What are you doing untying that colt? Well, we're sealing it, of course. And they just say, carry on then. Jesus has that power to let other people know that even though something may seem off, it may seem odd, through Jesus Christ, we know it's okay. It's going to be fine. But for me, because of the way my strange little mind works, The first thing that pops into my mind as I was reading this while they're stealing this cult again that I've read a hundred times before was, these are not the droids you're looking for. (laughs) The thought has occurred to me that I don't make nearly enough Star Wars references. So I just thought that I would seize this opportunity as it has arisen today. I'm not necessarily the biggest Star Wars fan. I just really, really like the whole premise of the movies. I appreciate how the Jedi and the Sin battle together, living under an umbrella of inaccurate presumptions that has existed for thousands of years. The Jedi you see are supposed to be the good guys, for those of you who don't know what Star Wars is. Always seeking this balance in the Force. And yet whenever someone powerful comes along that they believe would risk upsetting their perception of the balance of the Force, they don't want to train them because there is a possibility that they won't do what they are told. And instead, they will become a powerful force of evil in the world, a force of darkness. It would be like if you created this amazing thing, maybe a beautiful garden, in a world that had everything this thing could ever need to survive in it. And then you told your little creation as you placed it into this perfect world of balance, don't eat from this tree. And it does. So too are the Jedi's like that with the dark force. Only they just as soon never put you in the garden in the first place. What the Jedi seem utterly incapable of understanding, of seeing, is that they're winning. When these movies begin, the good is winning. If it is truly balanced that they seek, they wouldn't be seeking to eradicate the dark side. Because you can't have a balance if something is one-sided. That is exactly the opposite of balance. That's called extinction. But when it comes to this lopsided, towards the good is winning, when a strong force of evil is going to have to arise to balance the good. Why is it that a force of light, a force of good, can't recognize when it's winning. It seems a little odd, doesn't it? But then if you look at us as human beings, 
How many human beings do you know that can't recognize and be happy in happiness? Instead, they're always waiting for the other shoe to drop, for things to go wrong. They can't just enjoy being happy that life is moving in their favor for a little while. They're waiting for something to go wrong. The world is balanced, and that's okay. Life is supposed to go up, and it is supposed to go down. Because balance means that there is both good and evil simultaneously existing. That there is both light and dark. That there is no winning, there is no losing. It's just balanced. Without temptation, we never have the choice. Temptation allows us to have choices in this life, to give us that false sense of control that we want to have so badly. If there wasn't a choice, where would we be? We would just be slaves. But we do have that choice. Without it, though, it'd be like living in a world like a unicycle trying to stand on its own on one leg. It doesn't work. Jesus came along on this Palm Sunday at a time when there was an extreme imbalance in the force of good and evil and light and dark on this earth. God's chosen people had become corrupt. They had chosen law over love. As our psalmist says, this is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. And there were no righteous entering. They were all corrupt. And God promised us long ago that he would never destroy the entire world with another flood. So instead, he sent us himself. This Sunday, our liturgy is supposed to be one of balance. It is designed to be a balance of life and a balance of death. That's what this whole week is about. But what saddens me is that our liturgy is actually designed under the assumption that most of you are not going to come back here on Thursday. And sadly, they're probably right. And even fewer of you will probably come back on Friday, especially since it's not going to be held in this church. That's what our liturgy assumes. That's what God assumes. Because like our Jedi, like our people... We don't understand that without the darkness, this world can have no light. We have to celebrate both. We have to be willing to come here on Palm Sunday and celebrate and shout Hosanna in the highest, waving our palm fronds in the air. We also have to be willing to come back on Thursday and see the betrayal, to witness Jesus Christ, knowing that his end was coming near and still celebrating with his disciples. And even more important, which is oddly generally the least attended service of them all, is what happens on Good Friday when we celebrate and we walk away after a service of death. It is not a service of death and resurrection. It is just a service to acknowledge death and mourning. Without those two services on Thursday and Friday, there is no balance. Because on Easter Sunday, we come back here and people we haven't seen since last Easter will show up. Because they want to be here to celebrate the good because nobody wants to walk through that darkness. Despite that we are not walking through it alone. We're supposed to be walking through it all together, joined as one. Every single one of us is supposed to walk the whole journey together. From the parade that starts today, the dinner on Thursday, the betrayal, and the death on Friday. So that comes Sunday, we have something to celebrate. If every day was exactly the same, what on earth would we ever celebrate? It would just be monotonous. The message of this is that this world needs balance. 
We need life. We need death. We need light and dark. We need hope. And whether we like it or not, we need despair in this world. Because without the other side, neither one exists. We have to live all of our lives, every aspect of it, not just sitting around waiting for the good, but also worshiping and enjoying and shouting Hosanna in the times of bad, trusting in God even when things in this world seem irrational or impossible, not just focusing on the one thing in this world that we want, but seeing the entire journey Seeing the craziness of this world that God has created for us and placed us in and embracing all of it with love. Bearing witness to a God that has an interesting sense of humor. Things aren't always what they appear to be in this world. Embrace the light and the dark. Truly seek balance that both are there. Sometimes we don't see things because we're just not meant to see them. We can look right at something and it doesn't register to us. All of those who had gathered as Jesus rode into town on that donkey of peace saw only what they wanted to see in him. They saw an earthly man riding an earthly animal. But alas, he was not the king they were looking for. He was so much more than that, but they never saw it. They were so invested in seeing what they wanted to see that they missed seeing God. Now that's an oversight. It was bad enough that the guards didn't see the droids they were looking for. The Jews missed seeing God himself walking on earth. Jesus spends the first part of the Gospel of Mark telling people not to tell anyone who he truly is. And now he makes this huge, grand statement so big that a spontaneous parade breaks out in Jerusalem. All in his honor. And yet they never figured out who the Grand Marshal of the parade actually was. It was like when I went to Mardi Gras with my friends and Hulk Hogan was the Grand Marshal of one of the parades. And I look up and I see this man in yellow underwear. And the person next to me is going, oh my God, it's Hulk Hogan! I missed something in there. They saw something I didn't see. The Jews missed seeing God. Which makes us wonder, if Jesus walked into this room right now, would you just see a man riding a donkey in a church and think, boy, that's weird? Or would you see God here on earth walking amongst us? We know we'd be doing something strange because that's just what life is. Is it going to be the God you're looking for, though, or is it going to be something else? Are you going to see something but miss what is truly there? I feel sorry for all the Jews who are at the parade who never knew what they missed out on. It was a nice parade. A king had arrived. Maybe they caught some candy or some apples that were being thrown out, and they were all shouting, save us. And maybe he did. Maybe they got tomatoes or fruit, and their starvation was alleviated for one day. It's hard to say, really. What we can be sure of is that they didn't see the king they were looking for. He was right in front of them, and they missed it. So don't miss out on what we are celebrating this week. Because if you're just sitting in this pew today and then you don't come back until next Sunday, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the return of all of our disciples in the culmination of their skits as they portray to us Pastor Jen's version of the Last Supper. You're going to miss 
one of the most heart-wrenching services of the year, where we meet together in the light and we sing songs of joy and we read scripture together and we gradually extinguish candles until we walk out of a church in darkness. You're going to miss what makes God's creation so beautifully balanced. You can't just celebrate life if you're not willing to also celebrate the death that made it all possible. Jesus' resurrection couldn't have happened without his death. Light and dark must both exist. Good and evil must both exist. Right and wrong both exist in this world. We can't expect one to eradicate the other. They have to live in balance and harmony. So don't just jump to the end of the story next week. Shout Hosanna in the highest today and understand why it means save us, but also be open to being safe.